Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Salt and Light English Worship. Uh, I, can we all greet one another by saying Happy Easter? Okay. To your neighbors. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Okay. All right. Uh, women, especially women, do you like jewelry? Yeah, men, do you like jewelry? No? Yeah. <laughs> well, I brought some new design um, jewelry for the SS Spring Summer 2024. You want to see it? A new design? Uh, how do you like this necklace? A nice pendant necklace. How do you like it? How about knife? Knife. What that is? Scaffold necklace. You know what this is, right? It's for beheading. Cutting the neck. And you like this as a necklace or bracelet? What about uh, earrings? How do you like this earrings? A long, rusty nail earrings. Is it okay? <laughs> Would I look crazy wearing these earrings and uh, necklace? What do you think? Yeah? Uh, this is my question to you. Why is it that so many people wear this cross pendant necklace? Did you know that cross was used for the same purpose as these? Yes. As these? It was these items, the scaffold, were used to punish the criminals, to kill them, knives, nails. And during the Roman period, crucifixion, the cross, was, mo was the most cruel. And uh, yeah, it was the most cruel punish punishment for the criminals, okay? Isn't that strange? It's like Jesus, was not a criminal. He knew no sin. He was a righteous man, and yet he died on the cross. He shed his blood on the cross to pay for our sins, okay? After Jesus' resurrection, after Jesus' resurrection, everything has changed. Before Jesus' res res resurrection, cross was a symbol of God's punishment. It was the curse. It was judgment. It was a symbol of that. And even in the Bible, it, it, it records that uh, cross, crucifixion, was God's curse. Okay? But everything changed after Jesus resurrected from the dead. Now, cross symbolizes God's glory. Victory over death. Yeah? So many things have changed. And now, for a woman, these cross pendant is one of the best sellers, steady seller in the world. Do you, you agree? Everything has changed. Um, today is Easter, and um, you know that I've lived in Israel for nine years. One of the places, one of my favorite places in Israel is here. The Garden Tomb. Have you heard of Garden Tomb? It's a place, it's one of the places, I'm not saying it's the only one, but it's one of the places that people, many Christians, assume this might be the actual tomb of Jesus. Okay? The Garden Tomb. You see uh, the entrance over there. Okay. Now let's read what, what's written in John 19, 17, and 18. Let's read it all together. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. So it describes where Jesus was crucified. Okay? It's a place called Golgotha, the skull. Okay? Now, this rocky hill was discovered in mid 19th century okay do you see the skull yes. shape okay 
And so many scholars assume, oh, maybe this place is the rocky hill where Jesus was crucified. It came to the middle. Okay. And another verse, John 1941. Let's read it all together. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And this verse describes where Jesus' tomb was, okay? Now, this is the map. This is the map of the garden tomb site, okay? And if you see on the upper right side, do you see the skull hill? This is where the rocky hill was placed. And right next to, it's very close, very close to the rocky hill, the whole place is the garden, okay? And inside the garden, there's a wine press, and also there was found a one ancient Jewish tomb, a new tomb, okay? It's over there, tomb. So many scholars assume that after the crucifixion, they, they took the body, the dead body, and because it's not too far, they came down to the garden and they, they laid his dead body inside the tomb. Okay. Now this is the repli replica of the tomb. If you see the rolling stone, how they uh, blocked the entrance. And this is the real, original one in, in the garden. And the big, uh, the stone is laid nearby. Okay, inside the garden. Now, if we go inside the garden, inside the tomb, this is what it looks like. Okay? Behind the fence, probably Jesus' dead body was laid there. Okay? And it says on the, on the door, he is not here, for he has risen. Okay? Uh, probably after, after, the, after his resurrection, uh, the linen cloth were laid on both sides, from the head part and also the body part. Okay. Now, the reason why I like this place is because every Easter morning, people, Christians, all around the world gather early in the morning at dawn to, to, do, uh, to attend the worship service, okay? right in front of the empty tomb. See, the praise team, they're singing, and attendants, People, the worshipers, Christians, they gather inside the tomb to worship the risen Lord. And this is one of the, um, it's a very uh, blessing experience because you're seeing with your own eyes the empty tomb and you're worshiping the risen Lord on Easter morning. And that is a very uh, fantastic um, experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in today's passage, it mentions about what happened after the death of Jesus, okay? It is quite a long <coughs> passage, but slowly let's read it all together, okay? One, it's from Matthew 28, verse 1 to 10, 18 to 20, okay? One, two, three. After the Shabbat, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like the dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Sorry. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb Afraid, yet filled with joy, ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. 
Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and, the, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Wow, that was long. Okay, so this is what happened after. After, um, after his resurrection, okay? As you could visualize it, since you, I've shown you the, the uh, image, right? The woman went early dawn, early at dawn, to, to see Jesus in that body. And the tomb was empty, the roll was, uh, the stone was rolled away, and there was an angel greeting them. The woman didn't know what happened. Probably he thought that someone s stole his dead body. But the angel assured them, you know, that he, he's not here, he's risen from the dead. And he said to go to Galilee to tell the other disciples. So that's what they did on their way to, to tell their uh, brothers and sisters they met the risen Lord. And Jesus, the risen Lord, once again, went to Galilee to meet his disciples. Now, what do you think? There was a last word, okay? He made his last word to his disciples. What was it? Do you remember? Before ascending to heaven, Jesus asked something, a very important thing to the disciples. What was it? To make disciples. Okay, go and make disciples, teach them everything that I've told you. And the promise was, I will be with you till the end. That was his promise, and that was his request, okay? Now, as, as Jesus' request, the disciples really changed, okay? Only after witnessing the risen Lord, their faith, their shaking faith became a genuine faith. Now, after meeting the risen Lord, the disciples really did. They were able to preach the gospel boldly, okay? And most of the disciples died, they martyred, okay? They, they died because of that. But they were not afraid. And how was that possible? How was that possible? Because Jesus promised that he will send his Holy Spirit. He will send his Holy Spirit and he will be with us till the end. So for those who have this faith of resurrection, okay, will be able to become his disciples. Not only that, they are able to make other disciples, okay? When I read this, making disciples, I first thought, oh, okay, I need to make disciples here in English ministry. So I thought, I almost thought that making disciples was all about programs, teaching the word of God, making a Bible study, a small group Bible studies, teaching them God's word, praying together, discussing about it. I thought that would make a disciple, but I was wrong because these training does not make disciples. It doesn't work that way. And and I thought about it, how is it possible then to make other disciples? And one of it, I, I, um, I found an example from this Catholic priest. Okay? And I want to share with you his life, how he made other disciples. This, uh, may, many of you know this uh, priest. His name is Yi Tesok, Catholic priest. And uh, he was called John Lee by the Sudanese. Okay? Um, he was well known to the public because of this documentary film released in 2010. It okay? dealt with his ministry, his life, and his death. Okay? Uh, I, I will call him John Lee, Father John Lee. He was a medical doctor. Okay? And, he, and he decided to become a priest. And uh, 
and he was, after being ordained as a priest, he decided to go to South Sudan. At that time, it was one of the poorest country, and they were going through wars, okay? And he went there in 2001, because he was the only doctor in the area called Tongs, okay? He would uh, take care of um, uh, patients, hundreds of patients every day. No Sundays, no weekends. This is the film, okay? This is the film, poster of the film. And the title was in Korean, Ujima Tonzu. In English, it's called Don't Cry for Me Sudan, okay? While he was doing his ministry, he, he had a special affection toward the, the lepers, okay? The lepers were the poorest of the poorest. They were the outcasts. So he had a special care for them. He would visit the village and he would take care of them. But he had a very unique way to approach them. He was a doctor, he didn't give them a medicine right away. He would first hold hands, to hold hands, and he would listen to their life stories. Okay? That's that was his way of expressing his affection towards the lepers. And when he was doing ministry, he would always ask Jesus, the risen Lord, if, if, how would Jesus have done this if he was in my situation? And he would always ask and pray to God. And he, saw, and he also asked the question, what is the need? What is the urgent need for, uh, for these people? And so he decided to build a school. Instead of building a church, he thought, oh, there's so many abandoned children. So I think Jesus wants me to build a school first. So he built elementary, middle, high school, high school uh, school. And that was the first official school in, in that place, Tons. Okay. Not only that, he was talented in music. So he brought all the instrument, musical instruments from Korea and he taught them how to play uh, trumpet, trombone, horns, okay? And he also uh, made this brass band, okay? The first one ever in Sudan. Now, he, uh, sorry. In 2008, he had to visit Korea for medical checkup, okay? And uh, that's when he discovered a colon cancer. He wanted to go back to Sudan immediately, but the doctor wouldn't allow him to. After a year or so, he died. He died. And people, um, and this um, PD producer visited that place, Tons, and they were asking, you know, what's your memory of Father John Lee? Uh, they, they interviewed the lepers, the leopard, one of the leopard village, and they said that for them, John Lee, the father John Lee was like Jesus coming alive from the Bible. Because he was the only man who would come to visit them on a regular basis and who would really care for them and express his love for them and share his life, his time, his talent, his resources with them. He was the only one. So they thought, they saw Jesus in him, the risen Lord in Father John Lee. And after 10 years, around 10 years, in 2020, a new, another film, this is like the part two of the first film, called uh, Resurrection was released in 2020, okay? It's about the stories, the life of the students in Sudan, how their lives changed after 10 years of his death. And it was amazing to see that 57 Sudanese students who actually uh, were influenced by Pastor John Lee, they became nurses, doctors, okay? You see these uh, the students. And what do they do? They go, they go to the village where, where uh, the father John Lee visited 10 years ago. They visited them, the leopards, to take care of them. 
They listen to them. They hold hands with them. They're doing the same thing as their mentor, their teacher, uh, Father John Lee. Now they became the, became the disciple of Father John Lee, right? So I guess how does how does it work? How does how can we make disciples from his life and death? I concluded as this, the title of today's sermon, Living the Resurrection. Living the Resurrection. What does that mean? Because this Father John Lee, because he met, he encountered the risen Lord, he always abided with him. He always asked Jesus, what shall I do? What shall I do? And he was willing to obey. And he willingly went to the poorest country because that was the will of the risen Lord. Because he had Jesus living in him, it was, it was shown to other people, to the Sudanese, to the lepers there. It was shown to the students who were being educated by him. Okay? And this happened. And by living the resurrection, these, these students became a disciple. And they're doing the same thing as his father, John Lee. Okay? And so I, I also concluded so how do how do how should I make disciples in this English ministry? It's, it's not about it's not only about the programs or or intellectual training, learning and teaching the Bibles, memorizing its verses. It is important, but more than that is sharing our lives, right? Sharing our lives, sharing and revealing Jesus in me, okay? That. Revealing to other people that Jesus lives in me and willing to obey to his will, other people will see Jesus alive, Jesus alive through our life. Okay? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your message and thank you for uh, these faithful servants because they show uh, good examples of what it is to live the res resurrection. Heavenly Father, I pray that you give the Holy Spirit that you have promised us. Live in us, Lord. Dwell in us, Lord. So we will be able to live that resurrection. We will be able to reveal Jesus Christ in us to other people. And that they will be influenced by it. And they will become disciples too, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.